ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلق من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد my dear brothers and sisters in islam today i want to share a short story with you it took place during the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this was before the companions and the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam were able to overcome the enemies of Mecca the Quraysh and to reconquer Mecca the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam during this time period while they were in the middle of a struggle he would send out detachments secret uh, battalions to go and gather information to see what the Quraysh were doing planning and plotting against the Muslims and so he sent out a detachment of 30 riders amongst those riders was Abu Sa'id al-Khudari radiyallahu anhu and so on their way of course as you can understand they're out in the middle of the desert there's no hotel there's no motel there's no place to lay your head other than on the dirt on the sand and so these companions of the Prophet sallallahu in their mission the only place they could find rest at night was to come across perhaps a tribe that was out in the middle of the desert where they lived and request some hospitality and so Abu Sa'id al-Khudari radiallahu anhu and his companions in this detachment they found a tribe and they requested that they host them for the evening and the tribe refused not here not tonight and so as Abu Sa'id al-Khudari and his companions are going to move on from amongst that tribe someone came and said is there anyone that can cure the sting of a scorpion because our leader has been stung and the sting of the scorpion is deadly if it's not treated immediately then that's the end and in one narration it said our king our leader and so Abu Sa'id al-Khudri he turns and he says Naam Ana he says I can cure the sting of a scorpion and so of course there's a ray of sunshine a ray of hope for these people to save their leader and he says but I will not do it until you give us something they had just refused hospitality and now the only way to find that his companions would be safe and have a pleasant evening was to work his way into this tribe through some form of payment for a medical procedure of course Abu Sa'id al-Khudri was not a doctor but he figured Bismillah tawakkalna Allah the door has presented itself so we're going to go in whether we have to use the key or break it down so he says I can heal your your ruler and he says when I got in there and I saw the, the person had been stung the only thing that I could think to do was to recite the Quran and he says I recited Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Surah Al-Fatiha and I recited it seven times and on the seventh time the king of that tribe was healed 
And so the people were extremely happy with us. And they brought us food. And they brought us the sheeps. They said, we will give you 30 sheeps if you can do such a feat. And so there the companions were with the food, with the hospitality, with the sheeps. And they began to eat. He says, I ate and my companions ate. But when it came to the sheep, we all said, wait. We have to take these sheep to the Prophet wasallam and tell him what happened to see if it's permissible to eat this. If what we did was right. And so they returned back to the Prophet wasallam, And Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, he told him the story. And the Prophet wasallam, he says, What was it that made you think to do this? To recite the Qur'an? And he says, it's just something that came into my mind. That the Qur'an would heal them. I don't know. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Kulu, eat. Eat the food and feed others with the food that you got from this amazing feat. Showing Abu Sa'id al-Khudri and all of the other companions that indeed the Qur'an, it is a healing quality to it. It has healing powers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-Isra, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And we sent down what is in this Qur'an, that which contains shifa, healing, cure, and mercy to the believers. This was a physical cure that happened. This hadith which I narrated, this is not like the stories that many of us know from back home. The very wild outlandish stories that you hear sometimes people saying. So and so did this or that. They said subhanallah 10,000 times. And then they jumped off the building and they survived. No. This is not like that. But this is a real authentic narration. That was narrated by many of the great companions. As well as the scholars of hadith. And it has been deemed to be authentic. So this is from the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That the Quran. And the ayat in the Quran. It is a cure, it has a cure for physical ailment. Similarly, if not more important, the Qur'an has a cure for the diseases of the heart. And this is what we've been talking about for the past couple of months. The diseases of the heart such as envy, jealousy, ignorance, sin, transgression, and the likes. And there was once a man by the name of Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad. Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad was perhaps the most evil of people during his time. Corrupt, rotten to the core. The heart was diseased to the end. Not a morsel of goodness. He was considered to be one of the worst, or I guess you could say the best criminal minds of his time. A highway robber, a murderer, a thief. To the end of it, the list goes on. Not only that was he uh, a criminal, but he was famous for his crimes. And today we have some criminals that stand out in our minds, that have done such evil things, that have done them in such an evil way, that they become famous for this and they gain a reputation. So not only is there evil in their crime, but then they have arrogance about that criminal mind that they have been able to conjure up somehow. al fudayl ibn Ayyad, Amongst all of his doings, one night passed by a house. And he saw up in the window a beautiful young woman. And he said, let's give it a shot. Tonight I will be up in that room with that beautiful woman. And he began to climb the wall. The house had a, a large wall around it. And he began to climb over the wall, proceeding up to his goal. And off in the distance he heard an old man reciting the Qur'an. Of course, this was later after the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And he heard this man reciting the Qur'an, and he recited a verse. أَلَمْ يَأْنِي لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Is it not time that the hearts, they have fear and tremble with the remembrance of Allah? The hearts should be affected by the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the recitation of the Qur'an. And Al-Fadayl ibn Iyad at that moment he said, I froze. I couldn't continue. I stopped when I heard those verses from the mouth of that old shaykh. 
They penetrated directly into my heart. And the only thing that I could do was to climb down and to begin to make tawbah, to repent to Allah That the words and the speech of Allah cured this man's evil and corrupt heart. That he would change his life 180 degrees. Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad rahimahullah would go on to become an imam of Mecca and al Madina, Considered to be a revered scholar until this very day that his works are quoted from and studied. That many of his statements are used as evidence to support various rulings in Islam. Here you can see brothers and sisters that the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the ultimate cure. It is the ultimate cure for not only the diseases of the heart, the diseases that we're trying to overcome on a day-to-day -day basis, but it also has healing power for the diseases of the body. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha nasu qad ja'atkum maw'idatum min rabbikum wa shifa' wa shifa'un lima fi sudur He says, O oh mankind, there has come to you an advice, maw'idah, which contains a cure for that which is in your chest. Allah Azza wa is talking to us about the diseases of the heart and where we can find the cure for those diseases. The maw'idah, which Allah Azza wa talks about in the Qur'an. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he says that this is referring to the Qur'an itself, to the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that this speech contains no falsehood, no error, nothing that would lead you astray as it comes from Allah Azza wa and is perfect. It is His words, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it contains power to do whatever He wishes it to do. When you look at the nature of the Qur'an, brothers and sisters, it is something that contains great blessing and many secrets that are only unlocked with the knowledge of the Qur'an for a person that studies and learns. And this is the one who is truly affected, the one who has learned about the Qur'an and how to live with the Qur'an and how to live by the Qur'an, having full iman in the book of Allah And when a person behaves in this manner, and lives in this manner, then that is when they will find the cure that the Qur'an holds in it. Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he talks about this. And he says that the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the most powerful cure for those that have iman, those that have faith, that live by its guidelines, that base their life upon the halal and the haram, that have 100% belief in those words, and that it will heal and cure. If there is any shred of doubt, then you will not find what you're looking for in that book. He says, not only does it cure the diseases of the heart, but also the physical ailments, the ailments. And why would you think other than that? Because many people, they may be doubting. Just reciting some words. You have to take a shot, a pill. You have to have an operation. To the end of it, to the modern ways and means of medicating. The Qur'an, brothers and sisters, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشَّةِ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and if we had sent down this Qur'an unto the mountain, then you would find it trembling and shattering under the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of fear and awe of Allah azza wa jal. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to send down these words, to the creation, a mountain, strong and solid, impenetrable structure that reaches deeps into the depths of the earth. It is unmovable that the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would shatter this mountain. The strength and power found in the speech of Allah is capable of whatever He subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes, whether it's the diseases of the heart or the ailments of the limbs. And as I said to you, there are some conditions for this. For a person that wishes to heal themselves with the speech of Allah first and foremost, they have to understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot pick it up and begin to recite and you do not understand what it is that you're reading. Likewise, you cannot pick it up and recite and the life that you're living is opposite to it. Just as the man that came from travel, his hair was disheveled, his clothes were dirty and torn, and he raised his hands to the sky. 
And he said, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. Oh my Lord, my Lord. haram. haram. bil haram. That he was eating and drinking and consuming haram. He was clothing himself with haram. And his lifestyle was based upon haram. فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لِذَلِكَ The Prophet ﷺ said, How would a person like this be answered by Allah Azawajal? That you are breaking every commandment, every rule, not fulfilling your obligations, and then you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a cure, to heal you, to bless you. How do you think it would be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would answer a person in that condition? So brothers and sisters, I say this, وَأَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ ذَنْبِ فَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ بسم الله والحمد لله حمد كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضاه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد purification of the heart purification of the soul it is an obligation for us as Muslims to constantly be concerned with the condition of our heart not just the health of the heart but the qualities of spirituality that it possesses. That we are constantly striving and struggling against ourselves so that we can be better people, so that we can be better Muslims, so that we can be better believers in Allah Purification in Islam, it is part of our faith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, At-Tahur wa shatru al-Iman. Purification is part of Iman. If you are not purified, if you are not concerned with purity, then know that there is some deficiency in your belief. Purification or purity, cleanliness. As you hear in many other traditions, cleanliness is next to godliness. This rings true in Islam. That being clean inside and out. Shaykh al-Islam in Taymiyyah rahimahullah talks about purity. And what does it mean? When you say tahur or tahara, the first thing that comes to your mind is making wudu or making a ghusl or cleaning your clothes or cleaning the place that you want to pray. But tahara and purification, there are various different types. The first and perhaps most important type is that which is found in the heart. To be pure of heart, to have a sincere intention for Allah That you're not doing things for the sake of others. That your deeds are not rendered null and void because you are looking for praise from someone outside. But your worship is for Allah Azza wa The intention is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That your belief is for Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the beginning of purifying the heart. That you do not hold any anger or hatred toward your Muslim brothers. This is from the inside. The outside is also true. Staying away from dirty, foul things. The things which have been deemed in Islam as being khabith, as being repugnant. That which is physical, and that which is considered to be perhaps metaphorical. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَثِيَابَكَ فَطَاهِرْ وَثِيَابَكَ فَطَاهِرْ Talking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the first few words revealed to him, alayhi salatu wa salam, and your clothes, purify them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to purify his clothing. The outside, the external, as Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he talks about this and expounds upon why it was mentioned that you were to purify your outside when it is so important that the inside is purified. It is because what is on the outside affects directly what is on the inside. And for that reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited that you wear clothing made from animal skins that are considered to be khabith, considered to be repugnant and, and dirty. You cannot wear pork skin jacket or shoes. It is considered to be a foul creature that you cannot eat, you cannot consume it. But because of that foulness, wearing it will have an effect on the heart. And it will envelop your heart with repugnance and foulness. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us to eat from haram means. Things which were earned impermissibly, whether you stole it, or whether you earned it through any other way which would be considered haram, that this is something external. 
But because it was earned in that manner, even if the food itself, itself is considered to be halal, whatever type of food it is that you eat or drink, if it was earned from impermissible means, the food is considered to be khabith, repugnant and foul. And you eating that food, even though it's very physical, it has a very spiritual effect on the heart. And for that reason, Shaykh al-Islam al-Qayyim al-Jawziyah, he says that it is a very holistic way of living that the Muslims should have in regards to purity. That their hearts are pure, their bodies are pure and clean, their clothes are clean and pure, their homes that they live in are pure and clean, the masjids and the centers that they attend are pure and clean, and it is from their iman that they seek to purify and keep clean all of those things. So brothers and sisters, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless each and every one of us, to purify our hearts, and to rid them of any disease. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid wa akhiru da'wana na alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqmi salah.